Belichick has won the most Super Bowls in NFL history with a total of six. And this franchise series is not stopping until I pass him with seven. And we're going to do this with an NFL team that literally has zero Super Bowls to their name. So this is going to be quite the journey. But which NFL franchise are we actually going to bless with our presence? Call me crazy, but I'm actually going to let the almighty wheel decide which team we use in this franchise. There's good teams on this wheel, there's bad teams, but the one thing they all have in common is not one of these 12 franchises have a Super Bowl to their name. Fellas, I think it's just time to get this over with. This wheel is going to decide the fate of our franchise. I have to say, whoever this lands on is going to be getting the greatest coach in NFL history. We are taking our talent. There's just no way that happened. We get to use my Tennessee Titans. At least that means I have a jersey I can wear for the duration of the series. And I'm not going to lie, with me being able to choose my favorite team, it gives me a little bit more motivation. But I have to say, we're going to have some tough decisions to make. And as you can see, we're picking things up in this franchise in the current day NFL. So the first thing we do as the Tennessee Titans is going to be building the team in the offseason. And this franchise challenge is going to be much tougher than what you think, because Madden franchise only lasts up to 30 seasons so i have to win seven super bowls in 30 years or this entire thing was a massive failure and just waste of my time we're gonna have tough tough decisions dude like do we re-sign derrick henry like there's gonna be so much stuff happening here at the start of this franchise like i don't even know what to do so i guess the first thing to do here is just see who wins the super bowl out of these four teams hopefully it'll be us in the super bowl next season Ooh, so it was actually Actually, the 49ers and Ravens. Oh my god, the Lions got destroyed. The NFL logo conspiracy confirmed. And your Super Bowl 58 winner is officially the Baltimore freaking Ravens. I think we all could be happy here for Lamar Jackson. But Lamar, your time is over. It's now time for the Tennessee Titans to take over the NFL. First thing I do, hope that nobody of any importance retired. Our long snapper and Ryan Tannehill just called it quits. He's gonna kept playing. I wasn't gonna bring him back because our quarterback of the future is Will Levis. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. it does kind of suck they gave him normal development and he just doesn't have the best of ratings, but we'll make it work. And my God, dude, Derrick Henry had massive regression this offseason down to an 88. He lost his X factor. I mean, he is 30 years old for running back, but he's still got some juice left. Brother, look at all those stats that that regress like why because he turned 30 did he have to lose six carry not to mention two d hop drop quite a bit like he might be a guy we need to trade away potentially well, regardless we've got to find a way to give will levis weapons around them and we've got to find a way to improve this offensive line because by god dude this is one of the worst offensive lines i've seen in nfl freaking history and the defense too man has a ton of question marks this team honestly is just a complete mess from top to bottom but i'm here to fix it all that's some pretty big Big names across the league actually retiring here. Trent Williams, Calais Campbell, Julio Jones, Lane Johnson, Brandon Graham. The Eagles got decimated. Levante Davis gone. Joe Flacco retired. Russell Wilson. The good thing about this offseason, though, is that we do have $130 million in available cap. And you best believe I'm going to spend every freaking penny. First question here as we advance into next week, which players are we going to let go in free agency and who are we going to resign? Yeah, I know we're currently 50th all time in the NFL legacy leaderboard but by the end of this bad boy by the end of this franchise I promise you we are gonna end this thing as the best coach of all time time to get destroyed Andy bad news we have 36 players contracts we have to try and renegotiate Derrick Henry is such a tough one especially considering he has zero interest in re-signing so I might leave the decision on Derrick Henry to the end like I would love I'm going to be winning Super Bowls here. I would love to get Derek a ring. Like, I got to. But only if it makes financial sense. Now, first of all, Caleb Farley, I think I am going to accept his fifth-year option just because he's a super speedy cornerback and we need some young talent. Now, Danico Autry does have a ton of interest in coming back, and he has been great here in Tennessee. And, like... If I can get him on a relatively cheap deal, I mean, 77 overall is not horrible. I'll just 
offer a little bit less than what he's asking for, and he's testing out free agency. That's a horrible start. Now, Sean Murphy bunting, I would love to bring him back because our depth at corner is horrible. I'd be willing to give you a little four-year contract. I'll bump the salary up a little bit, and that's probably what it's going to take because he has no interest in returning. Hopefully, this is enough, and he's coming back. With the little talent this team does have coming back, I, I think it's important to retain as much as we freaking physically can. Now, Aziz Al share here. I do want him back. He's been good for us in his first year here. He only had a one-year contract. I'll give you a nice little three-year offer. That was enough for him to return. You can admit a linebacker, Jack Gibbons, former undrafted free agent. Like, I like his story. I am gonna give him. You know what? I'll even give you a four-year deal if you'll take a little cheap offer. He's coming back, and I'm hoping he's somebody that can actually develop into maybe an 80-plus overall. Now, Christian Fulton, dude, I don't want him anywhere near the team. He's gone. Aaron Brewer, I want a better center, so I think he can walk as well. Now, we do need depth at safety. Kavon Wallace did a decent job for us. We claimed him off of waivers his last year. Three-year deal? And he thinks that offer's perfect. I have to say, Nicholas Falk here. He was great for us this past season. So, I wouldn't mind him being our kicker for another year. Although, he doesn't think the same. So, we're going to have to get a new kicker in free agency. So, honestly, at this point, there's only like maybe one or two more players I even want to come back. And one of them is Terrell Edmonds. Like I said, we do need need safety depth. I don't want to give him too much money, but I'll give him a three-year deal. I'll up this just a bit. Hopefully, it's enough, and it is. Kind of surprised. Now, Gibson here, I wouldn't mind having him for, like, depth purposes, but, like, I'm not going to offer him too much money. If he doesn't take a three-year deal, I'm not going to cry about it, and I'm not crying about it. Go get your money elsewhere. Now, I think it's time, boys. The last deal we have to make, I have to make a decision on Derrick Henry. Like, we have a hundred and two million dollars to spend like he's the face of this franchise if i can get him a ring i want to like i don't think i need to offer him any more than a two-year deal but we will give him offer i'm not gonna be stupid with how much money we offer either I'll up this to like $5 million bonus. I'll give you up to $7 million a year. That's a pretty big cap hit for an agent running back, but it's Derek freaking Henry. I uh, even up a little more, a little more. We're gonna make this offer. Is Derrick Henry going to remain a Tennessee Titan for at least the next two years? And thank God! So at least Will Levis will have Derrick to hand off to for the next two seasons. And like I said, the rest of these guys, they can freaking walk. Now since we're here, I'm just curious, who does this mock draft have us taken? No quarterbacks in the top five, which is kind of wild. It has us going Joe Alt was the sixth pick, which I have to say... Don Madden didn't mess up the draft order a little bit, even though it's the exact same records as what happened in real life. Somehow the order got messed up, like bite me. Like how are the standings exactly how it went in real life, yet the draft order got messed up? Like such a dumb game. But I think it's time here, boys. We take this thing into free agency and see what talent we can add. And there's some big boys out there, man. Tyron Smith, Trent Brown, like we do need help at offensive tackle. We do need help at corner, so we need to be smart about this. Need to be smart. But the first man that does make a ton of sense is a brand new center in Connor Williams. He has a ton of interest in returning, which means we should be able to get him a little bit cheaper. I'll give you up to a four-year contract, and I'm going to leave the salary for what he's asking for. And we're currently the only offer, so that bodes pretty well for us. Now, the issue here is I would rather draft a left tackle, I think, and these two guys are over 30. I, I don't want to get aging veterans if I can avoid it. So I might actually go for Michael here. Would be an immediate plug and play starter on the right side. And he's another guy. I'll give you I'll give you a five-year fat contract, Mike. And we're beating out the Patriots and Raiders currently. Now for the rest of the team, we could use help at wide receiver, but like there's just not much talent that made it to free agency. I mean, I could potentially try and lock up Michael Pittman to a long-term deal, and then we could potentially potentially trade away DeAndre Hopkins. I just don't want to overpay too much. I think I'll give him another five-year contract and I'll 
bump it up just a bit. Because, I mean, he's a he's 86 overall young receiver. Like, going into his prime. I would love to add him and steal him from the Colts. So the freaking commanders are offering the entirety of their cap space. I'll up it just a bit. But I'm not going to get into a bidding war here. I'll that to 8.5 million. And we're still freaking behind the commanders. So I, I think I'm just going to withdraw my offer. So the one guy I'm 100% okay with overpaying for is Jalen Johnson. We need a lockdown corner so badly, so bad. So he is a guy I 100% would be willing to just throw so many dollars at. It'd be disgusting. I'll give you a six-year contract. I'll up this to like six and a half mil. I'm going to have to overpay because he has zero interest in joining, and I really don't care. I'll even up this contract bonus to like nine and a half mil, and I will actually up this. I, I'd be willing to go to 7-5. That's how bad I think we need a lockdown corner in Tennessee. It's not even in the green. And we're just tied with the other guys. I don't think I'm willing to risk that. So you know what? I, I'll go up even higher, dude. I'll go up to like, I think I'll go up to 8.5 mil. I think I will. I think I'm gonna make this bonus 10 mil. I think I'll, I'll God, dude, that's so much money. But he literally has a chance to become a top like three corner in the league. God, this is tough. But I think this man's gonna be worth it. I'll send that out into the universe. Hopefully, we're still tied with everybody else. Screw it, man. $10 million a year in salary. $10 million bonus. I'm doing it. This has got to be in the, It's still not in the green. What the frick does he want? $10 million salary with an $11 million bonus over six years. Like, Jalen, you got to accept that. At this point, I guess I'm just gonna risk it. Could offer Rasul Douglas as like a backup plan, but I don't want to give him any more than like two years, I think. A lot of money for a backup plan, but I'll send it out there regardless. We have zero talent at defensive tackle, so I would be willing to give a pretty big one-year contract to Grover Stewart and maybe draft his replacement, which were his only offer. Defensive end. What are the odds? Like, nobody's really interested is the big problem. What are the odds I could, I could possibly grab a Christian Wilkins on a three-year contract and play him on the left side? Give him three years, and I'll give you a $10 million bonus. I feel like that's a lot of money for Christian Wilkins. Or do I just go ahead and give that money to Chase Young? Problem is Chase has just no interest at all in joining us. We're not even listed as an option. So we'll remove that. I'd probably feel better if it was just a two-year deal for Wilkins, so hopefully we'll be able to land him too. Now, I will say I'd be totally fine offering Jonah Williams as a backup plan. Nothing crazy. I'll just give him exactly what he's asking for over a three-year deal. If he ends up being the backup, that's fine too. Really just don't think I'm interested in literally any of these receivers. I might just draft one. So honestly, I think we're ready to see how many of our targets we actually land. Out of all these offers, man, we have got to grab those offensive linemen, and I hope to God, we can get Jalen Johnson. I'm going to submit it through. So we're still in the battle for these two guys. But we ended up signing Wilkins, Michael, Connor Williams, Jonah Williams, and that's it. Jalen Johnson went to Los Angeles. That went hard. Hurts. Chase Young went to the Texans in our division and be on the same line as Will Anderson. So I do think at this point, it's actually pretty freaking important we do bring in Rasul Douglas. So I'll bump that offer to a two-year deal and I'll, I'll, I'll give you six. I'll give you a six million dollar bonus. That's better there. We're still in the lead for Grover Stewart. I think it's very important we get both of these guys. So we did land Grover Stewart, but we're still in a battle for Rasul Douglas. What is Los Angeles even need him for this got Jalen Johnson I'll up it just a little bit more man but like I just don't want to spend money on a guy that's not gonna be our long-term number one and we're still just tied with everybody else I'm gonna submit it through hopefully we land them and we didn't we, we literally didn't did Washington sign everybody the Texans also got Gilmore that's great now out of all the players remaining I do need a long-term kicker and I, I would love to get Dicker that would just be incredible to say over and over again Mr. Dicker, bro, I'll give you a four-year contract to be our kicker. Looking good for Dicker the kicker. And we got our guy, thank God. I feel like that's a pretty solid free agency haul. A good start, at least, for the rebuild. I'd like to give him mass.
massive shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. As you all probably know by now, I absolutely love working with SeatGeek because for every single sporting event that I've gone to the past five years, every single ticket I've purchased has been through SeatGeek. And as you can see, I obviously have the receipts to prove that. Even my fiance has gotten tickets on my SeatGeek account. Because outside of sporting events, you can obviously also get tickets to concerts, music festivals, and more. SeatGeek does an excellent job of letting you know whether or not you're getting a good deal or not. And it's super simple because they rate every single available ticket on their platform on a scale from 1 to 10. If you see a green dot, that means that's a good deal. If you see orange or red, that's a bad one. And with us in the midst of conference championship weekend, make sure to use SeatGeek so you don't miss out. And I'm here to help with that, of course, because you can use my code RBT to get $20 off your tickets at SeatGeek. Again, that's $20 off your first SeatGeek order if you use my promo code RBT. And don't forget to click the link in the description box below to get the SeatGeek app. Once Connor Williams gets healthy, this offensive line is going to look so much better. And at least our front seven looks capable. I do have to say our secondary is a little sus, but maybe we can help that in the draft. And speaking of the NFL draft, before we get there, I do want to see if we can make a few moves. Like Andre Dillard, I want him gone. Even if I can get like a seventh round pick. And outside of that, dude, like Rashad Weaver has a year left on his contract. He's not going to do much. So if I can get like a fifth round pick to this, I pick it all day, every day. And somehow, some way, I added in this receiver the deal, and the 49ers gave us a third round pick in return. Like, why would they do that? Not complaining, though. But I think that's the only moves we can make before the draft starts. Last mock draft has Brock Bowers going first. Honest to God, dude, I just hope we can get my choice of left pack which I think would be Joe Alt, which this has going all the way at 15. Here we freaking have it, boys. Our first draft class. It is time to begin. Which, with the number one pick in the draft, the Chicago Bears, they select Brock Bowers. Why... Caleb Williams didn't get picked there. I don't know. This is just a wild NFL simulation game created by a billion dollar company. Got to put that out there. But with the second pick, the Cardinals, they grab, they get Caleb Williams. Why would they take him when they have Kyler Murray? It makes, like, why? How about the Patriots, though? They've got to grab themselves a quarterback, right? They get Marvin Harrison. So this is when I actually start to get worried a little bit. Hopefully, they, they go left tackle. Oh, no. Oh no, please don't take Joseph here. I beg, do not take Joe Wall. They go Jared Verse, which does mean I could potentially trade back a little bit. Who's offering me here? Nobody I'm really interested in because I don't think Joe's going to fall that much. Maybe though, I could trade back to pick with like Jets maybe? The Giants? Maybe the Giants just really want to move up one spot. Possibly give me a second round pick. Oh no, it, it's, I, got, I gotta be careful. I don't get my pick skipped here. To submit this through is declined. How much time do we have left? Still have a minute, but I do have the option to pause. It looks like the Giants, man, they are not budging. Not even for a third round pick. Uh, do I like try and maybe just get a third round pick from next year? Maybe even get their second? Not even close. You know what? I think I'm just gonna do the smart thing here, not be dumb, and just make my pick. We need our left tackle of the future. Kool-Aid McKinstry at corner could be nice, but I'm gonna be smart here and get our biggest position to need and get our left tackle, who might be our left tackle for the duration of this franchise series. Hoping he's at least like a 76, 77 overall. Cause this man is an absolute monster. Which means we now skip ahead to our second round pick. Because there's still some good quarterbacks left. But I might actually go for a wide receiver here. Xavier Worthy. He's so fast. Like, he has a few rough skills like catching traffic. But, like, I think he could be pretty freaking talented. Now, outside of him, there are some very talented players still left. So, it's going to make it kind of tough. But I, I think the smart thing here, man, is just go top receiver available. There's some other good ones left. Like the top tier, they're gone. Xavier Worthy, he's the only scheme fit left. I'm going to take this man. And he does have hidden development with 97 speed and 98 acceleration. I think this, my friends, was a pretty solid second round pick. Now moving on to our next pick all the way at the end of the third round. So the top two players on my board are fullbacks. So that's definitely not the move. Honestly, I think I just go corner here. There's not much like 
good talent that I think will start for us at this point. Kalen King might. Hopefully he has hit and he has normal. Hopefully he's at least like, what, a 73 overall, maybe? Now with our fourth round pick, I do really need talent at tight end position. We don't have much depth there. I could use maybe Blake Quarrelm is still there. Okay, that kind of makes me rethink this. Do I go ahead and get potentially my Derrick Henry replacement? Is that going to be Tajay Spears? Braylon Allen is really good too, man. He's like a Derrick Henry clone. And he has about the stats you'd expect. But do I go Braylon Allen or do I go Blake Corum, who is a scheme fit? He's just not the fastest running back in the world, though. I, I think I'm actually going to go Braylon Allen. This might be a mistake, but I I'm going to stick with my guns here, and he just has normal development. Gosh dang it. Now we don't get to pick until the end of the fifth round. Now, I did tell you guys I could use some depth at tight end, although Eric here, he does not look he's a good blocker has good awareness so maybe he's actually a decent rated tight end he doesn't have hidden development but hopefully he's just serviceable now what the heck do i even do here with my six round pick now deep tackle is a spot where i do need a potential long-term replacement for grover stewart and i see your stat counts it's pretty solid out of georgia now I'm just going to take him. Like, who else am I going to take at this point? 90 strength, which is okay. Now, we have one more pick here at the start of the seventh round. How I have the first pick in the seventh round, I don't know. We actually have two seventh round picks. Can I, what do I even do here? Do I waste my pick? Now, I have to say, why is Lad McConkey still here? He is such a good player. Like, he's not the most athletic guy, but like, he has attributes like his B short route, his A deep route, B short route. I think he's the guy I'm willing to take a seventh round pick. Gone. No, he's normal development, but he can still be solid. And I think we all know we definitely could use two good receivers. At this point, man, I'm just taking best player available. Offensive guard with one of the last picks in the draft. If he's over like a 69 overall, that would be a massive dog. So literally, as I'm filming this, the Titans just hired their brand new head coach and Brian Callahan, offensive coordinator from the Bengals. And we're going to have to see. Did they make the right decision IRL and not hire years truly? Now on to more important matters. How good was that draft class? I'm hoping we at least got like two, maybe three starters for the future. You know what? That isn't horrible. Joe Wall is a little bit lower and overall than what I would have liked, but getting Xavier Worthy as a 76 in the second round, decent corner depth. Braylon Allen could turn into something decent. We got a 71 receiver in the seventh round. I'll take that. Not shabby whatsoever. So this is how the offense looked at the start of the preseason with guys like Connor Williams still injured, and we have Chia Conquo that's apparently injured. This offense is already so much better than what we inherited. Defense when did Jeff Simmons get hurt? Like, what is going on? But once our starters are in their actual places, the defense, it, it definitely needs a little bit of work, but it's not horrible. Now, the question here is I do need to probably make a few moves before the preseason starts. Definitely need to sign some depth out of free agency. I mean, there is some talented, undrafted free agents here available. Malachi Corley is a guy I would not mind adding to our team. I know he's only normal development, but he's a, like a stud. Why did he not get drafted? There is a player with 99 speed available. What in the world? 99? He can be my pump returner. I don't care. Welcome to the squad, Tyler Harrell. Oh, and just for the name, dude, Amir Speed with 95 speed. Like, even if he's a practice squad player, like, he just is elite. At least he's got to help the vibes of the squad. Tight end position could definitely use some veteran presence there. Austin Hooper's been a Titan in the past. He'll be a Titan at least for this season. Oh, Forrest Lamp is 100% a glue guy. 100% with that kind of last name. Even looks like a toe himself. Now, defensive end is a position where we definitely need some depth. Guy like Demarcus Walker, he's been in the Titan system before. I know it's a new regime and all, but familiar territory, he's going to return. Defensive tackle is another one where we just don't have much depth. And I think a guy like Deshaun Hand 
hand. I think he also, another guy who's been a Titan before, looks absolutely nothing like what he really does. But heck, maybe he can have a hand in us winning a Super Bowl. Oh, I already know who we're getting for the right end position. I've got to get Taco. Taco 100% is a Tennessee Titan for life. Marcus Davenport made it to free agency? Like, that's an interesting one. Like, former first-round pick, I believe. We're taking this guy. There's actually some talent out there at the safety positions. Okay, that makes things interesting. You know what? Eric Rowe? Have you a scheme fit? Bro, he might start for us. And last but not least, we have got to sign depth to strong safety. Jeremy Reeves, we legit had a ping pong class together in college. That's not a lie. I don't remember if he was good at ping pong and all. Like, I, I don't know if that's relevant, but we're going to sign him regardless. Okay, I didn't expect this trade to be accepted, but it was. We just added possibly our long-term starter at free safety. And let me tell you why. Because this guy is already a superstar. Even though he's just a 75 overall, he's one away from being an X-Factor already. And he's so young, dude. What the heck? Honestly, I'm a fan of this defense once our freaking players actually come back from injury. At least we won our first preseason game. Main thing here in the preseason, I just hope we don't get any injuries. Hey, we're 2-0 in the preseason, so at least the RBT era is off to a good start. We have trade offers for the free safety that we literally just signed. Like, what are they trying to offer me here? Like, why would I take any of those deals? <laughs> That's a little bit too realistic of a message, DeAndre. At least DeAndre is trying to help out Traylon Burks here, which I think is vital moving forward for our offense. So I think however he can help him, I'll take all day, every day. Which gave Traylon a 1,200-point XP boost, which is always appreciated. Our cornerback one got himself an upgrade, so I will take that all day, every day. If we go 3-0 in our first preseason as head coach, I'm telling you right now, Super Bowl champ. Champions, it's coming soon. That puts a damper on things. So at the end of the day, we are going to have to cut four players, which I think the first thing to do is just move as many players as we possibly can to the practice squad. Jalen Duncan, practice squad. I think we keep our 99 speed, 65 overall wide receiver on the team. I feel like we've got to. Like, Colton, you can go to the practice squad. 58 rated right tackle. Like, he's just not gonna cut it. We have a lot of depth to strong safety now, so Carter, he can go. Josh Thompson, welcome to the practice squad, buddy. Here's Jackson, welcome to the practice squad, buddy. On top of that, we don't don't need Devin Asiasi. We have some tight end depth now. Take Galwin. Like you're our seventh tight end. You're just not going to see the field ever. We still have three more players that I need to cut. Now, do we help us reach our numbers by actually trading away the guy that we just signed? Like, teams are obviously interested in him. I don't necessarily want Zach Ertz or either of these guys, but we'll try to make something happen. The Bengals gave me a third round pick for him. Not asking questions. And now, honestly, two more players need to be cut. This tight end that we drafted, he's 79 speed. He can sit the year on the practice squad. And then, now, Amir Speed, he's a glue guy, but... Do I need a fourth defensive tackle, or do I need Amir Speed? You know what? Amir Speed, like I said, glue guy. He's infectious, makes everybody around him at least one speed faster. Ross Blaylock can't send you on the practice squad, so to send you back home. Sorry, buddy. And through all that, somehow Dagston Hill got an upgrade, so good start for our hopefully future free safety. So as we head into the regular season, fellas, this is officially what the Tennessee Titans 2024 starting offense looks like. Let me tell you, it looks a lot better than what it looked like last season. And defensively, here's our starting 11. I think it's not going to be the greatest in the world. The defensive line's incredible. I, I feel like this defense is, you know, maybe a bit middle of the pack unit. Not to mention we have the best kicker and punter combo in the league. Now as we head into week one of the regular season, now is where I'm going to explain to you fellas how this series is going to go. Now what we're going to do each and every season is we're actually going to simulate the regular season. But if we do ultimately make the playoffs, I play every single playoff game. If we don't make the playoffs this season, you guys get a second season in this episode. So I feel like that's a pretty decent trick trade off. Now, I think we will start by simulating to the middle of the season, but got some things to take care of first. I have to set a season goal. Like, ha, ah, this is a tough one. I think I'm gonna give us 
I'm not quite sure we make the playoffs here in year one, but I'll give us at least seven wins. And to lead us to victory against the Bills week one, we gotta have a dominating offense. I'll focus on the passing game solely for Will Levis' development. We have to throw for 350 yards. At least as we start the season, some good, good news as Traylon Burks actually improved quite a bit up to a 75 overall. But this is the moment we see whether or not this season is promising or just a complete reboot build year we're gonna simulate to the middle of the season and i'm hoping at that point we have at least a 500 record so we're three and three so like it could be much worse but we are two games out of first place in the division so it's gonna be kind of tough to make the playoffs this year and yeah it's just been like a super super up and down start like we've scored a, quite a few points at least will's having again a pretty up and down season like halfway through the year eight interceptions is a little little bit too high for my liking maybe you can cut down in the second half derrick henry still doing derrick henry things averaging like five yards a carry it's probably a good thing we didn't trade away deandre hopkins Traylon burks is having the best season of his career so far xavier worthy doing pretty decent for a rookie we just can't get to the freaking quarterback for some reason At this point in the freaking season man we've only forced two turnovers that is Horrible. Now, before we do get this thing to the playoffs, I want to go ahead and try to renegotiate some contracts in season if there's anybody I really want. Oh, uh, it's actually kind of a tough one. Like, Grover Stewart and D-Hop, I really don't know because I don't know how much they're going to regress. So, I'll probably keep their contract negotiations to the offseason to see what we're dealing with there. Now, Tyler Harrell, bro, I want to go ahead and give this man a lifetime contract, dude. If I can get him for that cheap for seven years, he likes to offer, but sure if this team gets me the future i'm looking for what do you mean bro i just offered you a seven year deal now ryan stonehouse is another guy as our punter who i want to stick around for a long long time for whatever reason he doesn't want to return but man i'll give you some money same answer what do you mean ryan and malachi corley like as an undrafted free agent like he's a good number four receiver just depends how much money he really wants i don't want to offer like way too much hopefully a three you know what i need a four year deal keep you around for a while our first successful negotiation of the season now marcus davenport like he's another guy especially because he wants to come back like i'll give you a three-year deal keep you here for some depth purposes for a little while same thing with dylan radens a guy that we drafted here in the second round a few seasons ago i guess four seasons ago at this point um, he, he's a good guy to have, you know, as depth. He needs more time to think about it. You know what, Dylan, that's fair. And honestly, the rest of these guys, they can wait until the offseason. Fellas, I guess this is the point where we see whether or not this is actually a playoff team. At 3-3, three and three, the halfway point, like, this really could go either way. We could end up with 10 wins, we could end up with 5 wins. I really don't know. And oh my god, dude, the Tennessee Titans did it. Oh, we've barely squeaked our way into the playoffs we definitely didn't go 16 and 1 like the chiefs but somehow some way with a 9 and 8 record we probably got the 7 seed which means we have to go through baltimore and lamar jackson the reigning super bowl champions and if we beat them then we have to travel to kansas freaking city to take on the 16 and 1 chiefs but i think we're at the point where we just need to focus on one thing at a time god the ravens went 14 and 3 now they're asking me questions about my first ever playoff berth how important is it bro i'm gonna guarantee a win well that's just absolutely unbelievable i think that was the wrong decision now i have to say we had such a streaky season a four game losing streak followed by a four game winning streak oh my god we ended up with a top five offense how did that happen and of course the defense was pretty mid but will levis dude what a season this was like that's a lot of interceptions but Man, he put up some good numbers. Derrick Henry showing exactly why we re-signed. I mean, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns isn't bad for a 30-year-old running back. And DeAndre Hopkins, man, he very well might have played himself to another contract, regardless of his overall, dude. Almost 1,500 yards, 11 touchdowns. Traylon Burks actually eclipsed 10 receiving touchdowns himself. Look at our young buck receiver, Xavier Worthy, with about 850 yards and 8 touchdowns. So, honestly, even if we don't win the Super Bowl this season, I'll look at Chick with 750 yards. This team, at least, regardless of what happens, I think is headed in the right direction. If this team has had a pass rush outside of Jeff Simmons and Christian Wilkins, we could actually be Super Bowl contenders already. We already had Will Levis finish 
seventh in MVP voting. How did I make the playoffs with the Titans and not get a single, not one single coach of the year vote? You had three out of the top five offensive player of the year votes go to freaking Kansas City Chiefs. And we did, my friends, have the offensive rookie of the year goes to Xavier Worthy, which I think is pretty big. Defense rookie of the year, we didn't have anybody. Who, who even is that? Offensively, I mean, we did have a few players progress for sure. Oh no, is Xavier Worthy? He's injured for the playoffs. That sucks. Brother, you can play with a freaking back strain. What do you mean? And I have to say, I do like seeing Daxton Hill all the way up to a 78 already. He should be in the 80s pretty freaking soon. But I think it's time, fellas. The Titans, this wouldn't be the first time they traveled to Baltimore and got a big upset as the 7 seed. They're gonna troll everybody too and also wear the Oilers uniforms. Of course, we had to start things out on defense. And, gosh... At least they didn't score the first play. Oh, no, the read option. It's going to kill us. Kill Lamar. Fumble. Gosh, that's going to be that's gonna be hard to defend all game. There he is again, and we missed. That's just, that's going to hurt us, too. That's just going to be so hard to defend. He's going to score a touchdown. They just scored a touchdown in three plays, bro. I am getting first rounded. Option defense on conservative 100%. All right, let's see what our 99 speed kick returner can do here. I mean, I think a guy with 60 speed could have done that too. I just need a monster Will Levis game big time. The young quarterback, I think it's smart to get the running game going. We got two yards in the first play. Play number two, we got one. So this is honestly a suboptimal start. Third down and seven, absolutely no pressure, right? Wide open, Chig. Please, catch the ball and bounce. Chig, go. Chig, all the way down to the 30-yard line. Huge play. We actually try to get the ball in Tajay Spears' hands. Like, I know we didn't really do much, and maybe we never need to run that play again. Tajay Spears is so talented. Like, he could have very easily been our feature back this season, but I had to bring Derek back for a chance at a ring. And that, my friends, is exactly why Tajay Spears is heralded as a pretty solid young running back. Giving it D hop the ball here. Not liking the look. We're going to take off with Will. And Will is going to get close to the first down. I had a receiver open last second, but I just tried to be smart and get the for sure yardage. Two yards. All we need. Of course he's going to pick that up. See, if we can just be smart here and actually pound this in with Derrick Henry. Not have any chance at throwing an interception here on the goal line. Counter. Derrick Henry. Touchdown Titans as we answer just like that. Derrick Henry is not going out without a fight. Dicker the kicker's 100% so far. Let's see if we can keep Lamar Jackson and the Ravens from scoring like four plays this drive. That pop pass is going nowhere. Well, they ran the ball. And he broke the guy. Oh, there's just absolutely no way this is happening right now. Who even? Is that Jalen Warren? Brother, we might give up the NFL record most rushing yards in a game. What is going on right now? They're on pace for like 600 rushing yards this game. Gosh dang it, bro. Now I'm playing on a god dang pirate ship, man. Screen's jiggling. Let's see if I can keep from the interception here. Jig, please, 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 please. Oh, so close. Wait, this isn't a bad play call. Oh, no. Nobody's open. Oh, thank God. God, we got the ball away. Here we go, dude. Freaking third down and 10. Let's see what the heck we can cook up here. Traylon. Oh, my God. Traylon was about to be so open. Well, we get to punt the football and have the Ravens score inevitably in like two or three plays. At least that time we tackled. You know what? I'll take that over a touchdown all day, every day. Honest to God, dude. If they score a touchdown this drive, might be a GG. There's another pop pass. Nice little cut inside by Zay Flowers. It's going to be a third down a one. We have got to stop him here. I think I'm bringing the entire city of Costa Rica on this play. We're just going to all out blitz all day, every day. They ran the ball. Come on. He went He went from east to west instead of going downfield. Jalen Warren stopped in the backfield. Thank God we're getting the ball back. Just got to get Derek going. Big hole. Massive hole. Past one defender about 15 yards. I'll take that. The easy yardage here. Traylon Burks will get about five, so it's going to set up for a third and four. You know what? I might actually go hurry up here and run like this same exact thing. Hope to God this isn't a mistake. Tajay Spears over the middle. He's going to hang on to it just enough for the first. 
Another big gain here from Tajay. We'll take a we'll take nine and a half and go back to him here on the screen pass. If they don't get to me first, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Tajay Spears could have got more, but I'll take the first. And off to Derek here, and he's not gonna get much. And a dink and dunk again here and go to Derek Henry on the screen if we can get it off. I mean, that was about intercepted, dude. We don't have time to get the freaking ball off. Now, the thing is here, like, I feel like we should just go underneath and try to get a field goal, if anything, but let's not make a mistake. Jig gonna make the grab on the slant. They brought pressure, so I had to get the ball out quick. I think I just kicked the field goal, make sure I get the points. Cameron Dicker, you never let me down. Dicker never lets me down. We can get the ball back here before halftime. I will be a happy, happy boy. Can we actually tackle Jalen Warren this time? Thank you. Oh, I am blitzing again. I feel like this could possibly be a mistake. They ran the ball. Jalen Warren, why is he so hard to tackle? What a throw. We're just absolutely getting zero pressure on Lamar right now. Exhibit A. Exhibit freaking A. I'll tell you right now, I will not be smiling if they score a touchdown here. A pick would be absolutely fantastic. And they're going to score a touchdown. Oh my god, that makes me freaking sick. Our defense is just an absolute freaking mess here, dude. So I think it's pretty important with all three timeouts, we at least get a field goal here. 45 seconds, enough time. Just kidding. What a failure. I'm going to give D-Hop a shot here. Please, dude. Please go up and he drops the ball. we got to come down with that. I need somebody to make a play. Jig. Again, Chig makes the grab. Thank God, dude. Our leading receiver on the day. Gosh dang it, dude. Come on, man. Block for more than two seconds. Oh, my God. He's wide open. Please, please, please. Traylon Burks. Big. Freaking huge. How did he get so open? I told you guys this man had to have a breakout season. He did just that. And he's coming up huge honestly that play right there might keep us in the ball game will levis is so happy we are going for two to make this a three-point ball game derrick henry I somehow got that that's why i ran the ball with derrick freaking henry we get ball at halftime too how on earth do we have a chance to take the lead to start the second half that's if they don't freaking score here there's absolutely no way. I'll see you in the second half, Lamar. That was his first incompletion of the entire game, by the way. But honest to God, with how we started this game defensively, I cannot believe this is only a three-point game. Well, that's not the greatest of starts to the freaking half. Gosh, just absolutely nobody open there. Third and 18. Can't even keep from getting sacked here. DeAndre Hopkins wide open. What is going on? D-Hop, go! Busted coverage again, 96-year-old DeAndre Hopkins with the 86-yard touchdown to take the lead. Boys, I cannot believe what the heck is going on right now. Now they're running RPOs on me. That's going to be unstoppable. That's an easy first down every time. Keep Lamar out of the end zone this drive, and I am feeling confident. But that's going to be a very, very difficult task, obviously. I'm going to blitz again here because I'm determined to blitz Lamar Jackson at least once. At least a little decent man coverage there from yours truly. We're going to do it again, man. Going to try to make Lamar as uncomfortable as humanly possible. Screen pass. And it hit the offensive lineman. I love it. Boys, I think for the first time today, we kept the Ravens offense from scoring points on a drive. I'm going to try some absolute nonsense on this play, and I hope to God it works. I don't think it is. Unless you run up the field. Derrick Henry. He's please, please, please don't pick it off. I beg. Derrick Henry, you got to catch that, brother. Back to Tajay Spears here. And he's gonna get absolutely nothing. That's not good. Huge play. DeAndre down the sideline again. He's gonna make the grab. Another big first down from the veteran wide receiver. Oh, wide open. Wide open. That's Jig again. Who's having a monster game? Down within the red zone. If we score here, boys, we are up by two possessions, potentially going into the fourth quarter. Tajay on the screen, set up perfectly. But the linebacker almost got to me, but Tajay evaded him. We get about nine there. I think we're at the point where this is 100% Derrick Henry territory. 
The reason we paid you 10 plus million dollars and first down and more? All the way, he almost scored on that play. How on earth? I'm actually mixing things up here and bringing in the young rookie Braylon Allen on the goal line. All we need is a Mandingo. He cuts and we don't get it. We actually go backwards. So maybe that was a mistake. I just brought Derrick Henry right back in. We just need one yard. Derrick Henry, he's automatic, dude. Why did I ever do that? As Dicker the Kicker remains perfect today, that gives us an 11-point lead at the start of the fourth quarter. Boys, we might just pull off this upset. There goes Jalen Warren breaking 63 tackles a play. If they don't score quick, I feel like we should be okay. Well, here's a flowers wide open. And even if we do pull out this win, all we get to do is go travel to 16-1 Kansas City to play next week. But let's just make sure we win this game for now. Oh no, that, that's on me. I thought that was 100% a Texas route. Well, on uh, just a few plays are already at the 34-yard line, so that's just not very, uh, not very reassuring. And ooh, I thought that had potential for a pick. Oh no, I got baited, I got baited. That's a touchdown with Sean Bateman, god dang it. And as they go for two here, man, this is just once again a freaking ball game, isn't it? No shot. Tackle? Of course. Of course he scores. Back to being a field goal game. Gosh dang it. Just freaking knew, man. It wasn't going to be so easy. Oh, I do not like this. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. D-hop, please. D-hop, let's... He dropped it. Oh, that's actually the worst possible outcome. Oh, no. Tajay Spears, please, brother. Please. We're going to get uh, about five of those yards back. Now, what the frick do we do here? I think... I'm actually gonna audible to a run. I think this is the move. We need five yards. They blitzed and it was just an absolute perfect play call. We gotta punt the ball. Oh, that's horrible. That is absolutely horrible and I'm sick to my freaking stomach. Fellas, I am a nervous, nervous boy. They have Justin Tucker at kicker. So if they get past the 50, they're tying the game at least. And I do not wanna go to overtime. Definitely not. They ran the ball with Jalen. What is going on, man? This is the greatest running back I have ever seen. Mars surely do for an inaccurate pass. You know what? I'll take that all day. I'll take it. Come on, all over it. All over it. That's gonna. How's that a first? How's that a freaking first? Blitz in Zimbabwe on this play. Screen. I'm all over it. I'm all over it. That could have been a pick. That could have been a pick six. I'm sick. Oh no, brother! Wide open. They're in field goal range. Gosh dang it. Minute warning. I am just scared. I am a scared, scared boy. Come on, wrap up. Or don't. Or just, I, I, can we tackle? Like, is that... Do we practice tackling and practice? Like, is that a thing? Come on, get to him. Get to him. Yes. Yes. It's about freaking time, boys. Third down and seven. Oh my god. Biggest play of my freaking career here, dude. Oh, he's wide open. Oh, that's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. I'm blitzing every play. And that is not, not a good thing. It's this definitely not a good thing. Oh no, I gotta call a timeout. Oh, this is this is just not good. This is not good at all. Oh thank god, an accurate pass that stops the clock. Oh, they throw this. He threw it straight into the freaking ground. Oh my god, third down and goal from the three. What is going on? Oh, here we go. Oh no, he's wide. What are you doing, you imbecile? Well, fellas, we uh we have 40 seconds to score a touchdown or we're knocked out of the playoffs in our first freaking game. Gosh dang defense with just an absolute meltdown. It'd be a great time for our 99 speed receiver to take one of the house. And that's just, that's not going to happen here. 38 seconds to go. 78 yards. Wow, I need a miracle. No, uh, just, uh, just absolutely horrible. Absolutely just horrible. Oh, I almost got freaking stopped for a safety. Can we, can we block for like, just a split second. That's all I'm asking for. Not too much. D-Hop, please. D-Hop, he dropped the ball. Are you serious? Are you serious? Fourth and 24, a miracle is needed. I gotta chunk it. That's overthrown, isn't it? That's overthrown, isn't it? That could have been a first down. That's ball game. That is ball game. 
Oh my god! Brother, I did everything I could. I did absolutely everything I could, but our defense lets us down as we lose 36 to 32, and we get first rounded. God, that one hurts. I mean, when you give up 150 yards and eight broken tackles to Jalen Warren, like, you honestly don't deserve to win. You just don't. Okay, so now my assistant GM is just talking crap. Like, I'm not already down or anything. But even though we did lose... Like, I feel like this team 100% over-exceeded expectations this season. I mean, this offense, I mean, it's got some weapons, but I don't think it's a playoff caliber talented offense. Same thing with this defense. We've got to fix some things up this next offseason because if we tackle like that, we're never winning the Super Bowl. But I do have to say, boys, like, I am still proud of this team for making the playoffs in season one. As I'm telling you, my friends, this is just the beginning. Seven Super Bowls, I'm telling you, they're coming in the next decade. I'm calling it. After all that, it ends up the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow winning their first Super Bowl. But I promise you, boys, we will be here soon enough. Thankfully, we didn't have anybody of significance retire here at the end of the season. But at the start of the next episode, as we delve into the offseason, we're going to have some more tough decisions coming our way. But hopefully you guys, regardless, enjoyed the first episode of this brand new series. And if you did, it would mean a lot to me. If you could drop a big thumbs up, also subscribe if you haven't. And you can click right here to watch another video on the channel that I promise you'll enjoy just as much as this 